playing with brakes. All right, as if you couldn't figure out already, we're gonna start playing with some brakes. It's a big brake upgrade for the Crossfire that I kind of pieced together with OEM parts. So we'll show you what we got and how it's gonna work out. Okay, for illustrative purposes, I'm gonna use the uh, brakes from the Tiburon. They're a very similar setup to what's on the Crossfire. This is for the front. The Crossfire doesn't have the drilled, but it is, they are both 300 millimeter discs and vented. Now the rear on both of them are about the same size and non-vented. Okay, now the new set, we'll leave them in their bags just to keep the uh, corrosion away. But these are the rear. They are vented style. It's got the, should be the inner hub for the parking brake. And these are 300 millimeter. So they're what, the same size as the front. So for illustration, so then if the rear is 300 millimeter like the front used to be, that obviously means that the front rotors are going to be bigger yet. And here they are. Quick little comparison for you. These are heavy. But anyways, this is a 345 millimeter front brake. Got the big vent. Could have gone for the higher end rotors, but I decided these were on sale, so go cheap, see how they work. And if they're good enough, keep them. If you want a little more, Go to a different style. All right, for any of those keeping track, these discs are from a C32 AMG. And I think they were around, was it model year 2002, three, somewhere in there, early 2000s. And that's where the discs came from. They were just pretty cheap off of we're gonna get these like auto anything or something. They had a 25% off sale, so they were like 28 bucks a rotor. Can't really beat that. So now that we're going to that, what are we using for calipers? Okay, the caliper set I got were off of a CLK 500. They're the exact same calipers that come on things like the uh, C32, but because it's a non-AMG uh, brake set, you can find them a lot cheaper. Because apparently people think that there's some sort of magic when they put an AMG sticker on. So, anyways, these are the rear calipers. They are a twin piston, one on each side. So that will fit pretty nicely. And then for the front, we are going with these bad boys. From the same CLK 500, a four piston. Made by Brembo. So, if all my researching is correct, these are a direct bolt-on. To a crossfire. But we'll never really know until we get to that point, but I'm just going to worry about cleaning these up for today 
and we'll have a time sometime in the future, maybe like a February, March area where we will actually put these on the car. I can't put them on right now because the current wheels won't be able to clear this beefy section. So let's get over to the table and start cleaning. All right, over on the workbench, we got the brake caliper paint system. This is that $50 epoxy style stuff. Heat resistant up to 980 degrees Fahrenheit. So that should be good enough to keep the color on. Anyways, inside this system, they give you everything that they think you'll need to clean up your brakes. Some brake cleaner, your paint itself, the activator accelerant for the paint, this awesome winning paintbrush, and you can't forget the high-tech stir stick. And you got like hints telling you don't put it on too cold, then instructions, and this stupid little postcard thing. But the big thing to look out for is back here, of course, behind this sticker is the manufacturer date. So you can see it's November of 2016. This only has a shelf life of 24 months. So that means November of 2018, it'll be game over. So keep that in mind. If you're buying it and shelving it, use it before that date expires. All right, anyways, for the actual rough cleaning, I got a bunch of these brushes. These are actually on sale over the uh, week. They're like $7.99 with a, was it $5 rebate or something? So got them for cheap. They come with three different bristles in two different widths. So you got stainless, nylon, and a brass. So stainless is gonna be your most aggressive, then the brass, than the nylon. So you can have these for multiple different things. The nylon's good for cleaning. So if you're into detailing your car, this will help you get that grime out of the uh, shifter gate engravings. So. For the most part, on the brake calipers, we're just going to stick with the stainless. They're just, it's just aggressive enough to get the brake dust off. And you can see how nice and clean that is. So. While researching this, you can also see that there's a reading on the caliper. This says that the caliper is made for the 345 millimeter disc. So that means we've got the right caliper and the right discs, so we should be good to go. So I'm just going to brush this down. You guys don't need to watch me for a lot of it because brushing's brushing. Okay, although it's advised not to break down the calipers, I actually ended up breaking it down anyways, mainly because the caliper here, this would be the driver's side. So you have the driver's side of what was on the C32. 
So the wheel would be here and the brake would be back here. You got the bleeder up there. Now what you end up doing is having to switch this around so that what's on the driver's side will now be on the passenger side. So with this thing the same way, the wheel is here, but the front of the crossfire is here, whereas on the AMG C32, the front's on this side. So what you end up running into is in here, you can see that there's a smaller and a bigger piston. So as the brake rotor rolls through, this one grabs first and then this one. If you just have it the other way, your rotor is going to be spinning this way and the big one's going to catch first, followed by the small one. So what I'm doing is swapping these pieces onto the brackets. You can see some corrosion going on with dissimilar metals. These are brass fitting pins into an aluminum piece. So they kind of corrode a little bit in there. Then you got a little uh, O-ring washer thing. Goes there and there. So it's kind of neat to see what's inside of a caliper. And it also allows us to clean up these caliper brackets a little better. And I'm half thinking about just uh, powder coating these bracket pieces, but I'm a little bit worried about getting anything on the flange faces, so I'll have to figure that out. All right, I got those brackets sitting in the parts washer so we can get them final cleaned up. So let's break apart this one. There's a total of eight bolts. breaking apart a lot nicer than the other one. Got to go drain the fluid. There's a little bit of fluid still in this. side. This one's being stubborn. All right, that one took a lot of effort. You can definitely see why with the galvanic corrosion. That's what happens when you put dissimilar metals together. They corrode together. So maybe that's by design or whatever. Don't know. Let's keep our caliper pieces uh, with each other. We don't have to do anything with the rear since they're 
perfectly symmetrical. So let's just stuff them under the table for now. All right. Time to go check on the parts in the parts washer and get the rest of these things washed up. All right, we got one bracket taped up so we can attempt a powder coat and see what it <clears throat> and see how it turns out. With all this stuff on there, I'm not too sure. We got her cleaned up and we put it in the oven, baked off anything so it won't off gas through. So, I guess there's only one way to find out and paint her up and see what it goes. All right, well, the bracket's powdered, coated pretty good. Got it all taped off so it was sealed to the bracket three again. So, I got the two there. Now it's time we tackle this part. As you can see, we're already cleaned it up pretty well. Went through and hit all the edges, so it should be clean. All right, as you can see, it comes pretty much like quarter full. That's the way it's supposed to. It's a little on the lumpy side. Not a big fan of that. I don't know what the deal is with that. As you can see, it's kind of got some big chunks in there. Who cares? All right, and we've got to wait five minutes for the reaction to start, and it should do something like thicken up or something weird. I don't know. I'm gonna go take it into the house so it has a little warmth to uh, start the reaction and see what it does. Well, I had the impression that it was supposed to be a little thicker than it is, but. I guess it is what it is. So let's actually just see if it brushes on at all. Actually, it covers pretty well, so. Doesn't seem too bad. So I guess I will get painting.
Well, they cured up overnight. They're looking pretty nice. But what I'd suggest if anyone else is doing this type of kit, get one of these brushes beforehand. That other little ghetto brush like we thought it was doesn't, it leaves a lot of brush strokes. So you're gonna want one of these foam things and probably one of those paint strainers that you can pick up at any auto parts store, um, auto paint store place. So that will get rid of all the weird little lumps and stuff and it'll look pretty good. But anyways, let's get putting these guys back together. Suppose let's just start with this one. Let's see, visualize it. We're on the front. We want this one. Oops. Put our O-ring back. Looks like I got a little bit of paint over the edge, so. We got our little O-ring. And we just hook them together. Our bolts, I shot with a little bit of black, just for fun. All right, now you can see they're fully assembled. The only concern I might have is this piece. Previously, it was same side as the drain end. So, when you got this guy mounted up here, we might end up running into a clearance issue or something with it coming down here. So, this may or may not be a viable option. If for some reason it doesn't quite work, I'll just swap it around the other way and just deal with it as it comes. But, that's pretty much how they're looking. Looking pretty sharp. But we got one little extra addition. All right, there we go. Gonna break up that gold a little bit. No, 
not a big fan of when people put like a the AMG sticker or something on a crossfire. It just looks a little weird. But Brembos are Brembos. Well, that's it for today. We got the brakes ready to go on the car. Whole oh, nice caliper and the disc. So you can see the how the 345 millimeter disc looks. Quite a bit huge. So that'll be a great addition to the Crossfire and it'll probably get installed when we kick off the whole major build that we're gonna be doing on the Crossfire come New Year, probably February, March. We're doing a whole complete build. So stay tuned, check that out. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. And we'll see you guys later.